Okay, so <laughs> I, I don't really do these kind of tutorials because I, I don't really have a lot of knowledge, but I wanted to share. There's been some questions on the Fobonichi journalers group about using your pencils for backgrounds. And so I just kind of wanted to share what I had learned. And there are so many other people that actually have art skill that you should really check them out. But I'm just going to show you my <laughs> no skill thing I've learned to do with them. Anyways, mostly for doing backgrounds. And if you've seen any of my pages in my journal that have color backgrounds in them, like... Let's see, this one, or this one, or this one. I almost always use my ink tents blocks because I own them, not because it's the best. Well, actually it is the best in my personal opinion because once you put a layer of the ink tents blocks down, they're permanent. So when it's dry, you can go over it with all kinds of things. And it, it's just, it's not like putting a base of watercolor down. Watercolors are hard to write over and they, they just, they leave like a chalky, I have my door open, sorry. Uh, they leave like a chalky film on top of your paper. Um, what I wanted, what, what the ink tense blocks do, or ink tense pencils, they, it doesn't leave any kind of film on your paper. So when you put a layer down and you let it dry, it's like the paper is colored, not a color wash on the paper. And that's why I, if you're, if you do a lot of backgrounds, you can't beat the ink tents blocks. They, they're just, uh, they're just amazing. And as you can tell, they're brightly colored and they, they're just, I, I can't recommend them more, but they're around $200. <laughs> I did not spend that. I got them on an awesome Black Friday deal for 35 bucks, which is why I own them. If you want to get them and you can't find an awesome deal on them, a smaller set of these would work awesome. Um, but again, I, I just happened to trip over a really good deal on them. I, I do recommend them highly if you do a lot of backgrounds. They, they just... I can't say enough nice things about them. They're just really wonderful. But they, in my opinion, they're very limited. Um, you can use them like a palette or you can use them as washes on backgrounds and things like that, but they're hard to do detail with. So this would be, if you, if you said which one would you buy, the pencils or the blocks, I would go for the pencils. Okay, um, also an alternative for doing the, the wash backgrounds. Now I'm, all of this is talking on um, thin journal paper, like the Miguel, Miguel Ruiz or the Moleskin, they're around a 70 weight paper. Um, and they're, they're just, you know, it's composition paper weight paper. So that's what this is based on. Now, watercolor paper, mixed media paper, that is going to be a completely different animal. This is just for if you're working with your Fobonichis and most of us have some kind of, I'm trying to figure out what that is. We're trying to get, it's in between storms. So my light's going to go real bright, real dark. <laughs> um, most of us have these lightweight paper journals and that's what this is about. It's not about art <laughs> on any level. But I really do like the watercolor palette you can get from Michaels. There's also a knockoff of this from Hobby Lobby. Not exactly the same colors, but the same basic principles. It's just a basic palette with a coupon. You get them for around three bucks. I think full price, they're like $5.99. It's, you can't beat them. But I wanted to talk about the pencils in this one. If you want a demonstration on these, just leave me a comment down below and I will give you a demonstration on these for backgrounds. But again, this is gonna be about the pencils. Okay, so a, a lot of the comments we get in the Fobonichi Journalers group is somebody goes out and buys a set of ink tense pencils. Um, I have the 72 set. I recommend the 72 set. I do not recommend the smaller sets and everybody's gonna go, oh, must be nice, you have lots of money. I don't have lots of money. I bought a smaller set, regretted it immediately because as soon as I started using them, I realized I wanted all the colors because they are just absolutely vibrant and just, you, you won't regret them at all. I've never met anybody that did regret them. Um, but except for when they bought the smaller sets. So I do recommend the larger sets of these. Um, it's worth the money to spend on this than it is to waste on cheap watercolor pencils. And I also uh, agree, say that about expensive watercolor pencils. It's, 
there's a reason these are cheap <laughs> and there's a reason that these are not <laughs> and it's all based on pigment but anyways a lot of the frustration people get from the cheaper less expensive watercolor pencils is they don't glide nice they don't mix with water well or they they're sketchy or it's because they're cheap pigment and so the less pigment you have and the cheaper the pigment that you have the harder it is to make it do what you want it to do and again i'm kind of getting derailed but if you want we'll go into more details of that if you guys are interested in the difference between like you know artist loft watercolors and say derwent watercolors um but I, this is going to be about backgrounds if i ever get to it Anyways, a lot of the people want to do wash backgrounds on their pages in the journals, but they don't want to add a lot of water. And as soon as you put a brush in water to these pages, they go and they curl up and they're just, it's a monkey mess. What I have found, uh, again, mostly with the ink tints because I get a lot of people saying they get, they're struggling with these. So we're going to use those first is your best friend for doing wash backgrounds is a baby wipe. I don't care what kind of baby wipe you like. <laughs> Pick a baby wipe, but, um, and wring it out just a little bit in your garbage can or whatever so you can get a, some of the moisture out of it. it. You just want it to be damp because you're just doing a wash. Um, and again, I'll show you the difference in the different pencils, but for, for the people that bought the ink tints and then struggled were like, I can't figure out how to do a background. Most people, the thought is, is that you put a background down by scribbling on the paper and then you smear it around. If you're doing watercolor paper or a thicker heavyweight paper, that works awesome because that's what these are designed for. But if you're doing a thinner, there's going to be a lot of editing in this video. <laughs> Anyways, most people would put the pencil down, wash it, and then with the watercolor paper, you have time to blend it out. The problem with your journaling paper, just like a regular journal, a composition notebook, whatever, you don't have the time that the paper will allow you to blend it out because it's really thin. It'll start to pill. The more water you add to it, the, the weaker it gets. And that's why the watercolor or the baby wipe comes in so handy. Here's the other reason why good pencils versus cheap pencils is really important. This is an ink tense pencil. This is the deep blue 850. And um, I'll show you how little ink it takes. But basically what you want to do is you want to take your baby wipe and your pencil and you want to apply your ink because remember these are ink, these are not watercolors. The ink to the baby wipe, and then you start blending. And that is as easy as it is. <laughs> I know, it's like, I, I know. <laughs> when I tell people, just grab your baby wipe, they're like, oh no, it's so complicated, I wish I could do that. No, 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 that, that was it. Now, if you want it to be darker, my advice with the thinner paper again, is to let this completely dry. Let it completely dry. Because these are ink tents, they're permanent, they will not reactivate with water. So what happens is this will dry, become permanent, and you can put a second layer on it. Now, for example, on the page in my journal that you guys haven't seen a video of, but if you're on the Fobonichi journals, you've seen this black page. This is done in ink tents. The black is ink tents. I did spray that with matte finish. The reason is, is because the more layers of pigment you put on the paper, the less it soaks into the paper, which means that your top layer won't so much be permanent anymore. So like if I just do this layer and I leave it, or I could do one more and I leave it, it'll be permanent. It won't reactivate with water. But if you, the more layers you put on it, you're kind of like building layers of like sheets of paper and the top layer won't be so permanent after all. So just spray it with some matte medium and it, it makes, it seals it and you're ready to go. Okay, so that was with the Ink Tense pencil. Now let's try it with a watercolor. This is um, a set of Derwent's that I've got, Derwent watercolors. I have the 72 set. Set you don't now if you have ink tints and you're looking for pastel colors because these are very bright and very vibrant and they do not have light colors. You can make light colors, but if you're unskilled like me, <laughs> I need it to already be done. So I bought first I bought the 36 set of the watercolors. That was plenty to mix in with these because the 36 set this is not a 36 set. But the 36 set has your light pinks, your light purples, your light blues, and your light yellows, and your light greens. So you could make, intermix it with your ink tense pencils and you would have a full range of colors. But remember, these are not permanent. 
like the ink tents are. They're reactivated with water because they are watercolor. So I tried to find a color that was relatively this blue in the watercolors. Now again, this is the Derwent watercolor pencil and we'll try it here on this. I haven't actually tried this with these, um, but as you can see the pigment on the Derwent, how bright. Derwent watercolors, watercolor, okay? So we're gonna go right next to it here and it's the same effect. Basically, you wipe it on and it's done. Now, if you want these darker, you need to do it right now. Because if you just let this dry and then add more color to it, it stains the paper, but it will still reactivate it. So if you wanted more, more ink on it now, you're gonna wanna do it while it's still wet and you can smooth it out and blend it. The nice part is, look at how they blend together. <laughs> I love them just a lot, in case you hadn't noticed. Okay, so that, we'll let this dry. See, that added a little bit more water. Again, the watercolors are not quite as smooth as the ink tints because the ink just kind of melds out. It's so nice where the watercolors are a little more choppy, but it's still, the, the higher pigment watercolors still are really nice to write over, but it still will leave a little bit of a film compared to the ink tints, okay? So we've got ink tints and we've got Derwent, and then this is just an artist loft watercolor pencil, um, oh, a couple bucks at Michael's. I'm not sure how much um, now. I've had them for quite a while. I went and spent a fortune on, on cheap watercolors, and I would the only cheap watercolors I would recommend is the watercolor palette that I showed earlier. It's awesome. The pencils don't waste your money. <laughs> Buy a 36 count set of the Derwents or Faber-Castells or whatever. Castells, um, they're, they're 30 to $40 depending on where you get them and it, it's money you will not regret spending. Okay, so let's try just a, a less expensive watercolor pencil. Find some. And ready? Okay. The, the pigment still comes out. Now I have to say that this does not work well with watercolor pencils and the lighter colors across the board, mostly because they're so light. But let's do a little bit of ink here. Try to get as much as I can on here. Uh, this is uh, Artist Loft Blue. And you'll see that it does cover the background. The problem is, is that it's not as vibrant as the more expensive ones. But it also shows that you can make these work. You don't have to go out and spend a fortune on ink or on pencils. Um, that's about as much as I can build up on these. They tend to um, pill the paper really fast because there's not as much pigment in them. Um, you can let it dry and add just a little bit more, but see, it starts to just wipe it off after a while. So we've got an Artist Loft watercolor pencil, a Derwent watercolor pencil, and a Derwent ink tense pencil. And that was all done in backgrounds. And one swipe of the ink tints basically was the same amount of ink brightness as the two swipes of the watercolor. But it also, if you notice, let me see if I can pull it. There we go. Nice and smooth. It tends to get a little blotchy into the watercolor and then the really inexpensive stuff gets really blotchy. Um, it will smoothen out a little bit as it dries, but it's still a little blotchy. But it's totally doable because if you're gonna journal over the top of this, you don't really care. You just wanted some color in the background. But anyways, I, I would, I'm always a fan of the ink tents. I recommend them 100%. And again, I know you're going to say, well, it must be nice to have money. But if you can do it, save up and buy the 72. You, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. A great companion with the, the ink tents for the lighter colors. And I got the 72, but I don't recommend the 72 if you don't want to spend the money. Oh, I have my lids mixed up here. Here we go. Uh, is the Derwent watercolors or any really, you know, favorite uh, Castile has wonderful watercolors. I think Prisma even has some nice watercolors. But what you're looking for is a set of them with the lighter colors in them and to, to offset the ink tint. So I, I just, I really, I really, really enjoy this watercolor set. Um, but as you can tell, it works just fine with, with the cheaper and more inexpensive pencils. But like I'll show you in the lighter colors, let's try a, the lighter colors here, that it really, like we'll try a fundamentals in the pink. 
and you can tell not as much pigment comes off in the lighter colors. Try to work it as much as you can because you, you want to try to do this in one strip. <laughs> you don't want to keep going back. So, but see what happens once you put the lighter colors down to the paper. It be yeah, basically it vanishes. Let me find an ink tint that's in a lighter pink here. That's probably close. Oh no, this is probably closer. Yeah, that's a little bit closer. So here's a Derwent watercolor pink. Okay, those are the two I'm using. It's a little bit darker, but I don't have one that's exactly that color. But let's do the Derwent. And it does, it's pretty much the same problem. See, there, there's almost no color. So that's where the ink tints comes in handy. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's ink. So let me see the lightest pink I've got, I think is this one. And this is 530. And again, I don't, these don't come in a real light color, but it's, you know, same family here. Okay. Now, that one, pardon my problem, I rinse here. That one went on really low, really soft also because it's a lighter color. But again, with the ink tints, okay, let it dry. Oh, I'm spilling water everywhere here. You can go back once it's dried and put another layer on. And then just keep building your pink. And mine's kind of washed out here, but you can tell there. Okay? And so you could keep layering your pinks until you had a nice pink that you wanted. The two watercolors, the lighter colors are just kind of hopeless. <laughs> um, but if you want to do a wash of lighter colors, I'm just going to quickly jump in here and say that if you want to do the white, lighter colors in the watercolors, um, that's where I would definitely get into my, my Michaels, like cheaper, <laughs> cheapy cheap watercolor palette because it, there's your pinks. <laughs> and that's what I do <laughs> for the backgrounds. But anyways, if you have questions on how to do wash backgrounds on these the, the thinner journaling paper with watercolor pencils or ink tense pencils, leave me a comment down below. If there's something else you'd like to see done with this mirage of stuff, let me know. Um, I, like I said, I have, I have this, so if there's something you want me to test out, let me know. But I really recommend the ink tense. <laughs> But this is how to get it without getting the lines on your paper. It, it just makes it so much nicer because you don't have to rub as hard, you don't have to push as hard, and you don't get any of the lines. Um, although ink tints always blends out really nice. But um, all right, I gotta go because this is like a billion miles long because I really suck at doing these kind of videos. So hope that helps somebody. Ask questions if you've got them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.